In this video, I want to look a little bit deeper at the Kinematic Body 2D node, specifically how to handle collisions with objects so that you can, as in this example, have good looking bounces and responses to the collisions with the objects in your game. So let's take a look here at the basic structure of a Kinematic Body 2D scene. So we start with the body itself, and then it's going to have two children, a sprite, and a collision shape. The sprite is just going to be the texture so that you have a, an appearance for the node so you can see it when it moves around on the screen. And the collision shape, I've just made a circular collision shape here because that matches the shape of the sprite that I'm using. And when we move a kinematic body 2D, we want to use the move method. You give it a vector that represents the distance and the direction that you want to move, and it will automatically stop if it collides with an obstacle. That obstacle can be any other physics body, a kinematic body, a static body, or a rigid body. And then it's going to return to you a vector representing how much of the movement was left when it stopped. So let's look at that a little more in detail. So here's our object that we want to move. And the gray vector is the vector that we want to move the body along but we have this green obstacle that it's going to collide with. So when we call the move method on the body, it's actually going to stop when it hits the obstacle, and it's going to give us this red vector, which represents the remaining motion that it wasn't able to complete. And when, once we have that, we have two choices of what we can do in response. That's why I have two examples here. So when we hit the surface, we can either continue along it, sliding along the surface, or we can bounce off of it, reflecting the movement off of it like light off of a mirror. And to do that, we need the normal of the surface. So when you collide with an object, you can request its normal. The normal is a vector that represents, that's a perpendicular vector to the surface itself. So th in this way, we can tell what direction the surface is facing, right? So what direction the surface that we hit is facing. And now we can use that normal to do our collision response. And these are the two options. If we use that normal to slide the remaining motion, then it will move the body parallel to the surface with in the distance that the component of the remaining motion is in that direction. You see the length of this yellow arrow is not the same as the length of this red one, but it is along the x-axis the same distance. Or we can use that normal to reflect the remaining motion, which means it's going to use the same angle that it came in on, the angle of incidence, is going to equal the angle of reflection. It's going to bounce off at the same angle. And these are your two options for how you can respond to the collision with an object. So let's look at this in action. When I click the mouse, I will spawn a ball. That green vector is representing its velocity. And you can see, since I have set it to reflect, it's going to bounce off at the proper angle. I have also created this round obstacle in the middle so that you can see if I spawn a whole bunch of them, and they hit it at various angles, they will bounce off from the normal of the curved surface just as well as they do from the normal of the horizontal surface. And so you can see the length of the green vector doesn't change, the velocity remains steady, and it just looks like it bounces. Now alternatively, I hit space to toggle to slide mode, you can see that when the ball hits the surface, that green arrow got a little bit shorter because it's only using the horizontal component of the remaining velocity. And so if you hit it at a slower speed, you are going to only have a little bit of that motion left. And that's true of hitting the round surface as well. So slide you want to use when 
For example, you have a platformer and you want the player, when they land on the surface, to still be able to walk along it. Things like that. If we look at the code here, you can see there's not a whole lot that's involved. I basically have, I'm moving the ball at its velocity, capturing that re remaining motion in this variable motion, and then if we collide, if we are colliding with an object, we get the normal, we get that normal vector, and then so that we could show both examples, I have a, a reflect variable that's toggling whether it's going to reflect or slide. If we reflect, we use the reflect vector method on the motion and on the velocity. And if we slide, we do the same thing, but just use slide. And then you move, you use move one more time to move with the remaining motion that has been altered by your reflector slide. Now I also included this bounce coefficient in here. If you download the project and play around with it, you can set this to a lower value. If you set this to lower than one, you can uh, see the effects of losing some energy every time it bounces and it'll, it'll slow down as it bounces around. There's one other very important thing I want to show you. So here we have our shape. Our collision shape is a circle, right? And you use the inner handle here to set its size. But something I see happen quite frequently with students is that they wind up grabbing the outline handles by mistake, right? And they wind up trying to size it like this. Oh, this needs to go out a little bit more, right? And they wind up having the circle be scaled, which you can see here, this, this has now been scaled. And the problem is that when you run this, you're going to see some problems with your collisions. See that? Especially shows up when you hit the round surface. But if you're having glitchy collisions with your Kinematic Body 2D, very, very important that you go and you check that your collision shape has not been scaled. The scale property should never be anything but one by one. Always use the inner handle to drag it. Also, if you shifted it off center, you can set this back to zero, zero, so it will be centered on the parent kinematic body shape. Okay. This is true of the kinematic body itself as well. You don't want to scale that. Right? If you scale that, you're going to get some weird collision stuff happening too. So that'll do it for this video. Hopefully you have a better understanding now of how the kinematic body collisions and collision response works. Go ahead and download this project at the link below in the description if you want to try it out and experiment with it, with it yourself. And I will see you in the next video.